Dennis, we have an emergency. The concert is in 10 minutes and the pianist didn't come. Can you sub him? But what should I play? This. Hold my beer. Dreams. Hi Piano Cats, my name is Denis Zhdanov and today we speak about memorization issues. Very often after the concert people come to me and tell me wow, you're playing without the score, so great. It appears that a lot of people treat it as a kind of super ability. Although in reality we are trained to do that. And memorizing the piece is only the tip of an iceberg. It usually doesn't take as much time as uh, to build a detailed interpretation actually. I don't have a magic pill for you, but there are a lot of things you may do in order to accelerate the learning process. First of all, we have to figure out at what time of the day our brain is sharper. I guess that for many people, as well as for me, it's morning. If I have to memorize some challenging piece, I try to organize my day routine in such a way, if possible, that I would learn it during the first couple of working hours. Because I have noticed that in the morning, I can learn new material about four times faster than in the evening. For those of you guys who are relatively new to playing an instrument, my sincere advice. Learn theory. I know many people hate it and are bored to death to learn all those chords with inversions, to make uh, chord progressions, exercises and so on. But what theory gives us is the understanding of typical musical structures. Because we organize sounds in chords, let's say, in the similar way as we organize letters in words. And one may compare chord progressions and musical phrases with sentences. So something like would be a sentence for me, which has a very clear logical structures and thus easy to remember. The same principle works with languages. Just try to learn a few sentences in a language you don't understand at all, and then in a language you speak fluently. In the second case, you would learn not some random hieroglyphs, but sentences which do make sense to you. It's just confusing for our brain to remember things we don't actually understand. A long time ago, I have read about the memory process in some book, that our brain is usually able to remember easily up to seven symbols or units of information at once. Therefore, it's not such a big deal for most of us to remember a seven digit phone number. But in order to learn some longer number, let's say a credit card number, most of us would need to break it into segments of up to seven digits each and learn each segment separately first. So knowing the theory may allow you to perceive entire chords or even chord progressions as one unit. So when I'm learning something like its first bar, is not the combination of many notes to me, but rather just a one C major chord. And then the second one also is not just a set of notes, but a combination of just two chords. When I was a kid, I very well remember this period when I have got a more or less solid theory knowledge and how much faster I started to learn pieces then. Here I should mention the four key types of memory because understanding them may help you to build your own efficient learning system. What was told before about theory knowledge is related to the analytical memory. We analyze the piece, understand its structure, thus remember it faster. Knowing your hand positions when you play may also belong here. Although some musicians treat them more as a motoric memory. So when learning a piece, it's very useful to work through it in order to find a good fingering and to know where exactly you change your hand positions. So for example, in uh, some Czerny etude like I would not learn all those notes, of course. I would just understand that I have a G major scale all the way down from the E note. And then I would just know where I change my finger position. So I play three fingers, another three fingers. Then I have a fourth finger on the black key, another three fingers, turn, and a scale. What often helps my students to learn faster is just to play such uh, passages in clusters according to hand positions. If you play just a couple of times like that, you will already know very well 
where you have to change your hand position. And in the left hand, a minimal knowledge of uh, musical theory would help me to remember this better because it's just a very typical chord progression. Especially if I work on something more advanced, this is a very useful method. For example, right now I'm working on Bohuslav Martinu, uh, violin and piano sonatas, and there is such a passage in one of them. It might seem pretty advanced at first and difficult to memorize, but if I would just analyze it a bit and figure out my finger positions, my fingering, it will be very easy to remember. For example, first I would take just one hand, let's say left hand, and play it separately and try to analyze those hand positions. Like for example, the first one would be pretty easy. And then another one, also quite easy. So nothing special. And in the left hand, one, the second one, the third one. These positions, of course, are just clusters, but they're actually very comfortable to play. Yeah. Then always try to find and pay attention to repeating structures or patterns. When there is the same motif, repeat it starting from a different note. In the spot like I'm not learning all those notes, but just three patterns, three chains of a sequence, so... And then the same, and the same, repeating from different notes. And if possible, I try to use always the same fingering for them, so I just move my hand. The second important type is visual memory. As soon as I have analyzed the piece, understood it, understood it through theory knowledge and hand positions, I enforce my knowledge with a visual memory training. Some musicians told me that they can remember and imagine how the score looks. And I got a photographic memory for music. As if they have a scan of the score engraved into their brain. I can't say it works for me that good, but what I obviously do, and what helps me a lot, I learn the piece without playing it on the instrument. I just imagine precisely which keys I press and which fingers I use. Of course, it's not very easy at first. Most likely you will be tired just after 5 or 10 minutes of doing so, but gradually, if you would practice like that regularly, you will uh, develop the skill. She talked about metal practice. And when she first broached it to me, I really thought she was asking for the impossible. And I now see when I talk to my students, they have the same reaction that you must be able to, to uh, say mentally where every finger goes. And if you cannot go through the whole piece that way, you don't really know it. When I first heard that, I thought that's some sort of nuclear physics. And then I tried it a little bit, and this seemed very difficult, but it then became a habit. And I realized that it was that what she said was true, that if you couldn't do that, you were not secure in public. With very new and difficult pieces, I start to work in a short fragments, let's say one bar. I play a bar or two, then close my eyes, imagine it, how exactly I play it with my hands, and then move to the next bar. The more difficult the piece is, the more eagerly I practice this method. Because in such complex modern pieces like um, Ligeti Etude, this method gives me some crucial level of confidence. Next, auditory memory. It means exactly how it sounds. You hear where the music goes and know which notes to press. Of course, to use this type of memory, you need a decent hearing abilities, which you might actually develop with some ear training. I want you to sing from the top down. It's also very useful to sing the melody which you want to memorize, especially to sing the melody and name the notes. This is called a solfege method and it's compulsory in the professional music training. Glenn Gould once described a vacuum cleaner episode in his book. He was practicing some Mozart and suddenly a vacuum cleaner was launched uh, right next to him. Probably somebody was cleaning up the room. He noticed right away that everything he was playing started to sound much better with this external noise. In fact, those parts sounded the best that he didn't hear at all. The reason for it is that our imagination apparently starts to work more intensively and we substitute things we hear with things what we want to hear. Since then, Glenn Gould used this noise cover method time to time, 
when he had to learn a piece very quickly because his inner hearing and his imagination started to function more intensively instead of perceiving the ready sound, thus music was imprinted into his memory much faster. So as more active your imagination and inner hearing will work, as faster you will remember the music. If you play a piece for a while, your fingers know where to go by themselves. When I was a kid, I used to learn pieces like that. I just remember them with my fingers. But if you'd ask me to write the piece down or to imagine it in my head without playing, I'd most probably would be lost after a couple of bars. Motoric memory is the easiest to build, in fact, partially because making mechanical movements many times in a row doesn't require much concentration. We need mechanical memory a lot, of course, because when we play something challenging, something very fast, our brain sometimes is not able to process all this information in the real time. So we develop a finger memory, practicing some difficult spots and let our fingers to do their job automatically without overloading our processor. The only problem is that this type of memory is very unreliable and people who use mostly only this type of memory have memory lapses more often, especially when playing on public or on stage, because nothing ruins our mechanical memory better than some sudden stressful situation. So a piece you played perfectly at home just won't go on stage as smoothly. Once when I was very young, I had such a terrible memory lapse in Messiaen. Everything was fantastic until one moment when my hands just suddenly got stuck and I didn't know where I was. This frustration lasted just for a few moments, but long enough that nearly everyone in the audience would notice my confusion. Since then, I make sure that I do some precautions, like, uh, like enforcing my uh, knowledge by using different types of memory. I also break peace in short segments and make sure that I can start it from at least every bar. Some time ago I was playing a ligature etude on stage and at some point I lost myself. But at this time, instead of panicking, I just jumped immediately to the nearest checkpoint or last safe location. And I swear to you, anyone from my pianist friends who were listening to me then didn't notice that. It's also very important not to repeat too many times in a row already memorized fragments. So for example, I give myself a current task to learn those two bars. As soon as I can play this fragment well without the score, a couple of times in a row, I put a down check mark in my head and immediately move to the next one. I'm pretty sure that you might have catched yourself in a situation uh, when you were mechanically repeating a fragment you know already again and again. This happens because our brain usually doesn't really like to work hard for a long time. So we tend to automatically stick to something already familiar. I don't have much uh, experience in meditation, honestly, but it helps me tremendously just to sit relaxed for one minute before starting practicing and eliminate all thoughts, all stress or anxiety that exhaust my concentration. Instead, I try to reach a very concentrated, deeply conscious and focused state of mind. This is just a psychological trick which works for 30-40 minutes for me. Then the ability of a total concentration weakens and I have to take a break and uh, start over. Thanks for watching this. Don't forget to subscribe and have fun playing piano.